from the land of ice and snow, a Viking appeared in the frozen mist with a chef's knife and a saute pan. Well, okay, from warm Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, that same Viking, now with thinner blood, brings you a Viking's Kitchen. Barbecue. It's what America does best. And you know that if you've traveled the world, there is no place like the United States for barbecue. And the cool thing is all the regional barbecues from the Southeast to the Midwest, to Texas barbecue, to Western barbecue, to Northwestern barbecue, all different arrays, sure to suit someone's palate as long as you eat meat. I've got two great butts here. And what is a butt? You think of, you, you see, you hear this term butts. It's not the butt of the pig. It's actually the shoulder. How it came up with the word Boston butt, we can go into that in another episode. We're going to leave the fat on some of this. This is the top. This is the bottom of what we're going to be grilling. This is my special rub, 10 different spices. Now, if I was doing ribs, I might add some brown sugar to this and pack it on the rib but we're not, we're doing butts. So we're gonna liberally apply this, which means you don't want just a scant dusting. You want it on there. And we're gonna pack it on all sides. I call this my Viking rub. We're going to be putting this onto a grill and this grill has lava rocks on it, which if you bought a grill up until about 15 years ago, that's the way they were. And of course, if you want to go professional, if you want to do it the real way, you go with charcoal, woods like hickory, mesquite, oak. That's the real way. This is the end of the level of real way. But these new grills today, they have a metal sheath or a, a, a topper over the flame. What is the point of grilling? You're not gonna get any of the juices going into the rock or into the coals and coming back up into the meat. You might as well just do it inside. So I don't understand those grills. And you, it's hard to find one anymore that supports the lava rock. That's one properly rubbed and packed. So you can always tell someone I'm going home and rubbing some butt. you'll notice it's very late outside because this is going to go on the grill for about an hour. About 10 to 15 minutes on each side, we're gonna sear it on high heat. That's gonna encapsulate the juices inside. Then we're gonna bring it in, put it in the oven, and let it go all night at 220, 225 degrees. It's gonna go for about, probably about 14 hours. There's a bone in here, which I want. And the temperature next to the bone where the meat is, you want it to be 190 to 200 degrees. That's the sweet spot. I try to get it about 195, 196. This is going to help create some of the bark that you see at the end, that black bark. And so we'll searing it at the grill. The grill's smoking hot. The butts are well rubbed. We're ready to create some barbecue. We're going to hit this on each side until we create that crusty bark. And the bark's going to be created by the rub and also the fats from the pork. And that's going to sear in. Now we don't want to take it to where it's completely black, but we do want to get it close to there because the blackness is going to happen as it slowly cooks in the oven at 225 degrees for 14 hours. Oh, those are looking good. A shot of that bark starting, the smell. We're hitting it with some high heat, and that's what we're wanting to do. We're searing in all those wonderful juices inside that shoulder or butt, however you want to, whichever one you want to use is actually the pork shoulder. 
these butts are ready to go in the oven. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, the smell, the bark. Look, it's, it's gonna, this is going to be good. And this is multi-use meat. And when I say that, yes, of course, the base is barbecue. That's what we're going to make. And we're going to make a great Western barbecue sauce. But I make two at a time because I extend the same amount of energy. Now, I'm not talking about my physical energy. I'm talking about BTUs, British thermal units. At the grill, the oven, it's on at 225 degrees. The grill was as hot as it was gonna get for one as it is two. So I do two, and then I can freeze an entire one or a little more. Or I can give it as a gift, which I do a lot. I love to share the food that I make. In the oven it goes. The reason I put it in deep pans, that's the oven coming back up to temperature at 225. Uh, the reason I do it in deep pans is because if the juices flow over in the middle of the night, I don't want it going down onto any of the elements, catching fire, or anything like that. So I put it in a deep pan so it'll catch all that. So we'll see you in 14 hours. Here's to hog heaven and barbecue dreams. We'll see you in the morning. It's been 14 hours, the birth of the barbecue. It's gonna come out of the incubator here. I just pulled this one out to check our internal temperature and we're right where we want to be, 195 degrees. It took about 14 and a half hours at 222 to 224 degrees is where it was running. Beautiful, look at the bark on these, the smell. I slept, I actually did have barbecue dreams and I slept like a baby because I knew this was coming the next day. I'm going to pull this all apart and then separate some of it, freeze it for other types of, of meals. But this here is gonna be strictly for barbecue. I've got some homemade Western barbecue sauce, which you'll find the recipe down below on a vikingskitchen.com. And we got some coleslaw made, which you'll also find a couple coleslaw recipes, some baked beans. We're gonna have one heck of a meal. To me, this is like a four star meal. Shred this however you want. You want it fine shredded, shred it fine. A little thicker, make it a little thicker. You can see the juiciness of this. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful barbecue. We're going to be adding a little bit of the Western barbecue sauce, and you'll find that on a vikingskitchen.com. There's also a couple of other barbecue sauces, and some of the homemade coleslaw and baked beans, which you'll also find the recipe on there. To me, this is like a four-star meal. I love, love, love good barbecue. And I don't like dry barbecue. You know, like where it's all dry and there's just not much there. And that's all on how the meat's prepared and how it's done. And we leave a little bit of the fat in here because that helps to uh, keep the moisture level up. Now, if you get a big piece of fat like this one right here, we're gonna throw that aside. And uh, that's that. See, this is off one butt or shoulder. That's the technical. Look at that. Look at how much meat there is. A lot of meals. It's a fairly inexpensive cut of meat, the shoulder. Look at that. Just, just as tender as, as the day is long. Now that's what I call a mountain of meat. I think I'm gonna name this Mount Barbecue. I think it's a great name and I'm gonna tear into it. I'm not gonna climb it, I'm gonna tear into it. I should just, here, this is yours, this is mine. some good coleslaw and you know in the south when you get a barbecue sandwich they put coleslaw on top 
of the meat and then the barbecue sauce or the sauce and the coleslaw, but it's inside the sandwich. I love it. I like it when the some of the coleslaw juice dri drifts into the meat. I think it makes a wonderful flavor combination. Orphans are kicking in again. Oh, that's wonderful. Now you know how to make a good Boston butt or shoulder, same thing. We'll see you around. <laughs>